1994, 72-year-old Bar Rowley and his wife were hosting their annual 4th of July barbecue. Their large family, including 15-year-old grandson Ryan Blazer, had no idea how intensely their faith was about to be tested. Much of the footage in this story was taped as the events unfolded on that day and those that followed. Me and my grandpa wanted to go up on the roof to see if we could get a better view at the fireworks. Watch your step on here. Okay. Careful. Why don't you get up there? Start right up on here. Pretty good steady base, you yeah. know. Okay. He's a lot of fun to be with. He does a lot of fun things. Even though he's 73 years old, he's really active. Barr's wife of 32 years, Zelfa, was watching from below with the rest of the family. Barr and I have about 40 grandkids. All these grandkids really love him. When I walked over to the skylight and looked down, I was totally horrified. I didn't know what was wrong with him. I just figured he was going to get back up, but he didn't. 911 emergency. Hi, my grandma just fell off the roof. She just fell off of the roof? Yeah, she was on the roof and he fell off. Was your grandfather? Yeah, my grandfather. Okay, I need you to find out, make sure that he's breathing. Is he breathing? Yes, he's, he's breathing, but very badly. Okay, is he conscious? No, he's not Arabic for scramble. We're going to be just north of McDowell and east of Wrecker Road. We're going to land you right here in this intersection. The only obstructions are going to be the street lights. House is on the left. You're still on top of some vegetation. When Samaritan Aravac flight nurse Liz Tyson arrived, a medic unit was already at work on VAR. Basically, he's got a wrist left there. over abdomen. VAR, take a deep breath for me. Good, another one? Have you listen to lung sounds? Yeah, I don't really hear much. I hear some slight breath sounds in the upper lobe here. And this VAR, does your abdomen hurt? Your stomach hurt? Diminished, but I can hear uh, equal lung sounds. Yeah? Chris, we have a 230-pound male uh, fell from house second floor down onto concrete going to Scottsdale Memorial. Level one trauma, and let's go hot. Bar, are you having any pain anywhere? Oh. Bar, in your, in your chest right here, are you having a hard time breathing? The patient was complaining of pretty significant left-sided abdominal pain and pretty significant leg pain in the femur area. You can lose two to three units of blood just into your femur alone. He's still not moving his chest at all. Did you say his left abdomen was rigid? We're at the hospital now, okay? At Scottsdale Memorial Hospital, 72-year-old Var Rowley was admitted under the care of the emergency physician, Kurt Solom. Do you know what date it is? What's the date today? Hi. Huh? Do you know what day we're celebrating here today? He was able to move everything and feel everything, but he clearly wasn't thinking correctly, still disoriented. So we knew he was at high risk for a brain injury. He had pelvis. Okay. So you'll need a left femur shot. Left femur. Okay. X-ray, please. Okay. Hold it. Good. Breathe. But the initial CAT scan most certainly showed uh, multiple brain injuries. Among those treating VAR was trauma surgeon Dennis Wyland. Big left pelvic We saw that his pelvis uh, and sacrum were pretty severely fractured, and he had a large accumulation of blood around the fracture site. The scan of his head demonstrated small clots inside the substance of the brain as well as around it. Looks like the only operation he's going to need right now is to have his hip fixed uh, once he stabilizes. But I doubt they'll do anything tonight because of his head injury. Uh, with everything that's going on with him, I would uh, feel really good if he got out of here in a month. I felt bad because I didn't think it was that serious. I just figured he'd be in the hospital for a week or so. It really worried me. You may need some transfusions. 
People with advanced age don't do well with trauma, and he had particularly severe injuries. Do you know where you are now? In the hospital. It was uh, rather shocking to see him laying there. He was a lot worse than I thought. I thought he would be talking to me. Rescue 911 will continue. Over the next few days, doctors waited for VAR to stabilize so they could operate on his badly broken leg and pelvis. You're looking a lot better than your skylight. <laughs> Oh, he's squeezing everyone while I'm talking. Probably yeah. yeah. At that time, it just seemed like my father was pretty much with it. But slowly, it got worse. Barr's pelvic surgery went well, but there were other, more serious complications. He had this overwhelming pneumonia. He went into kidney failure, uh, which made his prognosis even worse. He then became uh, really pretty comatose as a result of the hemorrhage into his brain, as a result of the, the systems that were failing. It got worse and worse. It was very hard for the family to see him drifting deeper and deeper into a, you know, a coma state. Bar. As time went on, there was absolutely no response from him at all. Bar. Can you squeeze my hand if you hear me? It was uh, very hard for me being in the medical profession and knowing realistically what was going on and then knowing what I was hoping for. And I knew that the percentages were against VAR, just, uh, just being honest with myself. I was beginning to think that he wasn't going to make it. VAR had been in a coma for six weeks. We're into a point now where we're rendering what's called futile care. And what that means is that we're giving him treatments we're not sure we're making him any better. His chances were almost 100% that he was going to die, and then we're making him suffer a lot more than he would have otherwise. We felt that his brain, in view of the hemorrhage, and in view of his age and the advanced disease, would never really come around. My recommendation would, would be is to quit dialyzing him. They felt like if he uh, couldn't talk and was on all these machines, would it be better to take the machines off and let him go? He'd already told me prior to the accident that he would not allow himself to be left on any kind of life support. Even though I knew he could survive, I was asking myself, would he want to survive? I knew he wouldn't want it that way. Var's always got to be doing something. He's always doing something. He likes to go out into the outdoors. He just tried his uh, turn at water skiing two days before this happened. After knowing a man that was so strong and full of life and everything, to see him in that state was very, very difficult. The day after the doctors had told us that he didn't really stand much of any chance at all, I was in the room talking to my dad, like I always did, and I saw a little glimmer of awakeness, and my sister Penny came in. He's doing great. Look at him. He's awake. Dad, oh my gosh. We started talking about his dad's awake. He can hear what we're saying. He's responding. He'll squeeze your hand. And Penny and I both started crying, and my brother Gordon thought that we were crying because he just died. And that wasn't the reason why, and I told him, these are tears of joy. That was the first that I had seen him look at us in, in weeks on end. It was just a great feeling. I knew from that point forward, this is it. This is the turning point. Barr spent a month at Desert Samaritan Medical Center, undergoing intensive therapy. Push and step with your right. Very good. The doctors over at Scottsdale uh, were about ready to give up on me, about ready to unplug the, everything and let me go. When the doctor saw me, they helped him to move around. He figured it was nothing but a miracle. I sure do feel, feel like a miracle man. <laughs> yeah. I thought you might remember me before, but the odds that VAR would make it through this were 
maybe 10,000 to one. Six weeks, I don't remember anything. He's obviously a very tough character, and uh, lesser people who hadn't taken care of themselves certainly wouldn't have survived it. I can pick this walker up and walk around that tree and back. Well, that's good. We'll have to get you a little heavier walker. <laughs> <laughs> Four months later, the whole Rowley family gather together to celebrate Thanksgiving. Oh, my goodness, he's got a strong arm. We've always had a big turkey dinner. Zelta always does a wonderful job. And she's got four turkeys bought this year. We hope, hope it's enough to feed everybody. It's good to be here. When my mom called my grandpa and I was able to talk to him, the first thing he said joking around was, so you pushed me off the roof, huh? We were laughing about that. I'd really miss Grandpa's friendship and just his love. It'd be hard to be without Grandpa. Got a lot of hungry people. Tell him grab a plate and get with it. I was telling my grandson when he was up there taking pictures, be careful that skylight there. And then I'm the one that fell through it. I didn't didn't heed my own warning. Hey, you. Goodbye. This incident reminds me just how fragile life is. Now I can let Bar know how I feel about him and I appreciate him and love him. <laughs> we get a second chance with Bar. I have to watch him now, be sure that he doesn't do things he shouldn't be doing. I don't want him up on the roof anymore. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody for the support that they've given me. Starting with my wife, Zelfa. Without my wife around, life wouldn't be worth living. Not even any quail out here. Next. I looked at the child, and I assumed that there was someone watching him.